हॅलो माय नेम इज डॉक्टर अश्विनी देशपांडे वेलकम टू द लर्निंग डायलॉग ऑन डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग प्रिलिमिनरीज इन दिस लर्निंग डायलॉग आय विल डिस्कस अबाउट बेसिक बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स ऑफ अ डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम सॅम्पलिंग अँड अलायझिंग इशूज वॉट इज अ सिग्नल अ सिग्नल इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ सम इंडिपेंडंट वेरिएबल सच ॲज टाइम डिस्टन्स टेम्परेचर एक्सेट्रा एन इंडिपेंडंट वेरिएबल कॅन बी कंटिन्युअस इन नेचर ऑर डिस्क्रीट इन नेचर ए डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल कॅन बी कन्सिडर्ड ॲज अ सिक्वेन्स ऑफ नंबर्स एन अनालॉग सिग्नल इज कंटिन्युअस इन टाइम ॲज वेल कंटिन्युअस ऑन ॲम्प्लिट्यूड ॲक्सेस वेर ॲज a digital signal is a discrete time signal with discrete valued amplitudes this figure gives an example of an analog signal which is continuous in time also is continuous in amplitude whereas a digital signal is discrete in time as well it has discrete valued amplitude levels an analog signal upon sampling becomes a sampled signal after its quantization it takes up a fixed levels these fixed levels later are converted into a digital equivalent levels or binary levels thus we get a conversion from analog signal to the digital signal so why we require processing of the signals taking an example of filtering of noise from some noise corrupted signal aim is to process that noise that means to remove the noise from the signal in order to obtain better quality signal the task of signal processing can be employed in analog domain digital domain or mixed signal domain in analog signal processing domain the main components which are been used are active or passive electronic circuitry wherein the various types of signal processing functions which can be applied using this circuitries are differentiation integration filtering amplification etc and all these signal processing operations are carried out on naturally occurring analog signals hence this domain of signal processing is termed as analog signal processing in case of digital signal processing the signal operations are carried out on discrete time signals the ma- the main mathematical units or the functional units in the digital signal processing system are adder block multiplier block and the delay unit this block diagram shows the basic elements of a digital signal processing system to start with in this system an analog input is applied to an analog filter which is basically a band limited low pass filter this filter ensures the input analog signal is band limited and hence this low pass filter filtered output is further passed to the 
analog to digital converter block so that the signal the digital signal which will be obtained from this block will be suitable for a digital signal processing block in the digital signal processor block the dsp functions such as filtering operation convolution operation will be carried out and we obtain a processed digital signal as a output of this block the output of a digital signal processor block is digital in nature so whenever we need the retrieval in a form of an analog output at that time we add digital to analog converter block followed by that a reconstruction filter which will give away an approximated analog input as a result of the reconstruction filter of course the output which will be available at the end of the reconstruction filter will be a processed signal with a better quality as compared to the original analog input this equation shows how the sampled signal is obtained by performing periodic or the uniform sampling the original analog input signal is multiplied with a periodic signal which is basically an impulse train thus this multiplication will lead to a sampled signal where the samples of the original signal are obtained when this sampled signal is transformed into frequency domain as shown in the third step where the summation term is explored it shows there is a spectrum x of f at the frequency f and there are multiple frequency spectrums which appear at plus minus fs plus minus twice of fs and so on in a periodic manner this plot shows an idea about how we can obtain a samples from continuous time analog signal in the present example a 40 hertz of sinusoidal signal is sampled with a sampling frequency of 100 hertz according to sampling theorem a band limited continuous time signal with the highest frequency component as f max can be uniquely recovered from its samples provided the sampling rate is greater than or equal to twice of maximum frequency component thus the nyquist limit or the folding frequency is half of the sampling frequency these plots shows the spectrum of the sampled signal with different values of sampling frequencies in a first place sampling frequency is taken exactly as twice of the maximum frequency component in the second case sampling frequency is selected to be greater than twice of f max and in the third case the sampling frequency is selected to be less than twice of f max so if we start with the discussion from the third case where this condition is also termed as under sampling condition 
where when we select fs less than twice of f max the two adjacent frequency bands they are getting partially overlapped in the area of the overlap the chances of losing the information that is the frequency components is quite possible whereas when we select fs equal to exactly equal to twice of f max the overlap is vanished and we could see the spectrum of the bandwidth twice b that is from minus b to plus b can be uniquely shown from the adjacent frequency spectrum whereas choosing fs greater than twice of f max is far better so that we are separating the frequency spectrums far from each other so this condition will ensure a proper recovery of the original signal frequencies a signal reconstruction as seen earlier can be done from a digital to analog converter and a low pass reconstruction filter as shown in this plot in a first position a digital signal processed signal is shown which is discrete in time which are the discrete samples a sample signal when is recovered as a output of the digital to analog converter is shown in the second place whereas the output of the reconstruction filter is shown in figure number c the reconstruction filter will smooth out the envelope of the filter so that it will take up a form of a frequency spectrum which is expected for recovery of the original signal or the processed signal in figure number d it shows the recovered signal spectrum with the expected value of frequency component which was present in the input signal as f max let us now see what is meant by an aliasing component an analog signal with a frequency f if it is under sampled in the previous slide we seen the condition where fs was selected to be less than twice of f max and where there was an overlap between the frequency spectrums the adjacent frequency spectrums so the shaded portion there shows the aliasing effect so aliasing frequency component f alias can be computed by the relation that is f alias is equal to fs minus f where fs is the sampling rate or the sampling frequency minus f is the frequency component present in the input signal this relation will give us the computation of the alias component let us consider an example let us select two frequency components the first frequency component with 1 hertz frequency and the other frequency component that is 5 hertz both of these signals are analog signals initially in the first position an analog signal with frequency 1 hertz is shown in the second place this signal is sampled 
with a sampling frequency of 4 Hz so that the analog signal which is continuous in time now becomes a discrete time signal as denoted by x of n. It shows for 1 Hz frequency cycle when we sample at 4 Hz of sampling frequency we obtain 4 frequency samples at the positions the first position, second position, third position and the fourth position. Now if we consider another frequency an analog signal with a frequency 5 Hz. For 5 Hz frequency when it is sampled at a sampling frequency of 4 Hz this continuous time signal will become a discrete time signal where once again the number of frequency the number of the time domain samples picked are four samples at a location 1, 2, 3 and 4. Looking at the two discrete time signals for F1 as 1 Hertz and F2 as 5 Hertz. It shows that both the discrete time signals they are identical. When we will try to recover the original signal from the given discrete time representation it will be highly difficult to identify which discrete time signal belongs to 1 hertz frequency component and which belongs to 5 hertz frequency component. Hence, we state that F2 that is 5 hertz is an alias of F1 that is 1 hertz. That means F2 5 hertz takes up a low frequency component form that is 1 hertz and hence both of the frequency components are indistinguishable when we try to recover the original frequency component from this representation. These are the references for the content cover in this covered in this learning dialogue. Thank you.